you know, yesterday we studied that y is the square root of y squared is the same as the absolute value of y. So we have gone over that, right? So the topic still is the range of sine of any angle. Okay, sine of any angle. Okay, why it can be any angle, right? We're still, still study domain and range of sine. Okay, so we were here. We were here. Okay. okay. You need to learn how to handle these inequalities. I know it's pretty hard. Okay, I know it's pretty hard for most of you. Never done this before. Okay, you've never done this before. So pick up your paper pencil. Okay, so we're gonna continue this journey. Okay, so we're gonna continue this journey. Okay, so the range of sign, okay, under the circumstances we have this, we have this um, definition, right? Which is Y over R. Okay, the R is, R of course is defined. This is the definition of R. Okay, the square root of X squared plus Y squared. And then we say, okay, then we say that this denominator this denominator, okay, is greater than or equals to the square root of y squared, okay, because x squared is at least zero. The smallest x squared can be is zero. So we just substitute x squared by zero. Does that make sense? So that's, that's why this side is larger and this side is smaller because we replace X squared by the smallest possible number X can be. Now, do you guys recognize this? And of course, that's gonna be the square root of Y squared. The so square root of Y squared as we demonstrated yesterday its absolute value of y. Okay. We address that, you know, this is a few times. Do you have any questions so far? Okay. So now we look at this definition. We look at this definition. <clears throat> we look at this definition. And here's the denominator. And here's a denominator, okay? And this denominator is at least absolute value of y, okay? At, at least absolute value of y. So what does that say about sine of a? Right? What if I replace the denominator by it's a smaller, okay? I replace the denominator by something smaller than the denominator, i.e., what if I do, I do this, okay? I replace the denominator by something smaller than the denominator, but they're both positive. They're both positive. What will be the relationship? Okay, let's do another thing, okay? We're gonna do the replacement. 
this time I'm going to take absolute value of this guy. I'm take absolute value of this guy. I'm going to take, and then as a result of taking absolute value of this guy, all these are skills you will need in calculus classes. You may see this for the first time. You may not understand it completely today, but try best to write it down what I have here, okay? So I'm taking this absolute value. I'm taking this absolute value. As a result, I'm taking this absolute value. Okay, I'm taking this absolute value. The denominator is a positive. And as a result, I can drop the absolute value for the denominator and put the absolute value right there. Okay, and then now this is absolute value. Okay, the question that you can see here, I substitute the denominator by something smaller than the, denom the original denominator. So what would, that, what would that be? So what will be the relationship then? Okay, so here we have a relationship. Okay, let's simplify that. Okay, greater than or equals to the absolute value of y So now I'm substituting this guy by something larger than the original denominator, uh, smaller than the original denominator. What will happen? This was greater than, and this will be less than equal to. Why? Did you get it? When the numerator are the same, the smaller denominator part is going to be larger, right? Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. The denominator, when the, den when the denominator is larger, the quantity is going to be, we're talking, all of these are non-negative numbers, okay? All of these are non-negative numbers. This number is root of uh, absolute value of y divided by root of x squared plus y squared. This guy is positive, okay? It cannot be zero. And this guy, it's positive because the way we choose the points, right? The way we choose the point is not an origin. Okay. And we will consider those extreme cases, right? Now, these, this quantity is larger than that. So as a denominator, I replace this guy by a smaller denominator. As a result, the consequence is this, and this is going to be more than this guy, okay? A simple example, okay? Two is less than three, isn't it? Two is less than three. How about, what about one over two? and one over three, which one is larger? One over two. One over two is larger, right? So you see the direction is switched, right? And that's the same reason. That's a similar reason, okay? So if you replace two by three, right? You replace this numerator by a larger one, you see this denominator is larger than the other one. The smaller denominator, when the numerators are the same, okay? When the numerators are the same for positive number, all of these are dealing with positive numbers. The smaller denominator give you the larger value, okay? Larger denominator, 
smaller denominator, same numerator, smaller denominator give you the larger value. You get it? Okay, so now what does this equal to? This equals to one, right? Absolute value y divided by absolute value y is one. And what does this tell us? This tell us the absolute value of sine of a is less than or equal to one. So this tell us the range. This tells the range of sine. Okay, and furthermore, furthermore, and it tells us sine of a, sine of any angle, why sine can take any angle, is at least is between negative one and positive one. Okay, so because sine, the absolute value of sine is sine of angle which is less than or equals to one, that means sine A must be between negative one and one. This is the one single inequality you will be using in calculus one. I met uh, probably in chapter two. Any questions? So this is the range. This is the form of range of sine A. I have personally witnessed a lot of students they, can, they have no idea about this thing. Okay, which is the range? We ask them, do you know what the range of sine? They say, yes, I know. It's, it's, uh, it's negative one to one. Okay, that's a perfect answer. But they cannot do this. And as a result, they're gonna lose 10 points, 15 points, so on and so forth. Okay, these two are saying the same thing about the range of sine. But this is more useful in algebraic manipulation when you study squeeze theorem in calculus, calculus one. Okay, so this is the form I will be testing you left and right many, many times this semester. And this is the form, of course, you should know as well because they are the same thing. They are meaning the same thing, okay? So now why is sine can take any angle? Why can sine take any angle? Do you remember, do you remember the strip I, 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 uh, I sent you guys to play? Yes, right? Your, um, you basically can measure the angle and go any position Every position will have a Y, right? We'll have a Y. And Y could be zero, Y could be um, one is Y zero. It's at this position, right? You think about the Ys, right? And one will Y be the same as R at the pi over two position. And at this position is zero, right? Y is zero. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. To do this, yesterday I bring you the unit circle, right? I bring you the unit circle and I sent you the unit circle. Did you have that unit circle on your cell phone? So now I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use a unit circle as an example to illustrate this fact as well. Okay, domain and range. Domain is about the input for sine. The value of sine is a ratio. And where, how, how big is the ratio? The ratio is always between negative one and one. Okay, the ratio is always between negative one and one. Now, suppose, now we can use a unit circle, right? We know we can, by definition, we can use circle of any radius. As long as the radius is not zero, we can use any radius. But using radius of equals radius equals one has an advantage because R would be one, right? 
R equals to one. So that simplify the operation. That simplify the operation. Imagine that this is one. Imagine this value is one. The operation is simplified. You still get the same ratio. You still get the same ratio. No cheat, no problem. That's not, not, that's not a problem. If you have any argument with me, then we can talk about it in my office hours, right? You, you have learned that in trigonometry. Now, from definition, okay? I don't want to be away from definition. You want to learn simplicity? You follow me. Definition. Standard position. Standard position. When we are at the standard position, this angle could be zero, could be two pi, could be four pi, and so on, so on and so forth. But this is the terminal. Because whatever that angle is, we call sine of A, okay? Sine of A, and sine of A would be equals to what? Zero. That's right, sine of A, would it equal to what? Y over R. R is one, therefore it's just Y, isn't it? You follow me? It's just Y, right? What is Y in this, at this point? It's a blue number zero. You guys see that? Okay. So at this standard position, y is zero. Sine a is zero, that angle is zero. Now, okay, suppose I have a terminal over here. What will be the sine value? Don't worry about what, is, what the angle is. The angle could be pi over six, it could be two pi plus, pi over six and so on and so forth. It can, it can be any angle. What will be the Y value here at this point? It's half, right? That's your special angle, right? But you know that that's not only the special angle, right? So what if your terminal is, uh, what if your terminal is, hold on, sorry, okay. What if your terminal is right here? There will also be a blue number, right? We just don't know it. We don't know the exact value, but it's gonna be between one over square root of two and root three over two, yes? So you look at all these blue numbers, all these blue numbers are the Y coordinates Right on the y coordinates if the terminal cross it, right? So now, now at this point, okay, at this point, what is that blue number? That blue number is one. So that angle, sine of that angle, it could be pi over two, it could be two pi plus pi over two, and what would that what, what would be that value? One. Okay. Does everybody follow me? All the blue numbers on this unit circle are the values of sine for special angles. Do you follow me? Yes. All the blue number. Do you see that? Whether you remember them or not. You can see what is the smallest blue number there is on this unit circle. What is the smallest number, blue number on this unit circle? I hope you're not, none of you, none, none of us is colorblind, right? It would be zero. The smallest number is zero? Wrong. What is the smallest blue number on this unit circle? Negative one. Louder, please. 
What is the smallest blue number? Okay. Someone type on the chat. Could everybody see that? Negative one. Negative one. Do you guys see that? The sine ratio is the sine ratio is okay. It can be zero, can be half, can be one over rat, rat, root two, can be root three over two, can be one, can be root three over two. How about those numbers in between? There are lots of those numbers in between, but we just didn't you know, enumerate them. There are lots of number in between, but so that the, the numbers will be in between them. And zero, negative half, negative one over root two, negative root three over two, negative one. You guys see that? And negative root three over two, negative one over root two, negative one half. Okay, you want, if you want to have a sense about how long they are, this is the longest it can be, which is one. Okay, some of you can memorize these points, but you need to also understand the meaning. Now, the next one, the next number, that, that was the largest one, right? That's a positive one. The smallest one is right here. It's a negative one. That's the smallest sign value it can be. And this is the largest sign value it can be. So if you understand this picture, and you should also understand that sign of any angle is between negative one and a positive one. You follow me? So that picture also tell you, how did we get this picture? Definition. Definition, okay? You can see when I introduced the review of trigonometry, I did not introduce this circle first because this circle is secondary comparing to definition. Okay, if you want a simplicity, you want to understand the trigonometry, you don't go to unit circle, you go to definition, you go to ARD. You go to ARD, okay? You read it over and over again, you apply over and over again, then you will produce this unit circle yourself. Okay, you will produce this unit circle yourself, okay? So now, do we understand the domain and range now for sign A? So what is the domain for sign? Let's come back. What is the domain for sign? It can be any angle, right? You can, you, you can measure any angle for sign because every one of them will have a terminal and that terminal x comma y, then y divided by r will give you the sign ratio. No problem, r will never be zero the way we have chosen the points. Therefore, sign of any angle. So sign as a rule, okay? Sign as a rule, it can take any angle. Okay, it can take any angle. Okay, so let me put it on the top. Okay. Sign as a rule, it can take any angle. It produces a ratio. This ratio, this ratio, which we called sine of A of any angle, is going to be, it's going to have a range. Okay. And this range is between negative one or positive one or less than equals to one. 
to domain any angle. And the ratio is between negative one and one. Now, another perspective. Can everybody draw me a picture of sine? The curve, the sine curve. Can you draw sine curve? Because sine curve also tell you the domain and range. Let me tell you how it tells you the domain and range. I suppose everybody knows the sine curve, right? It's our heartbeat, right? If you go to the hospital, well, I hope none of us have to go to the hospital. If you have some hospital experience, I certainly did. There's a monitor by the patient's side, right? And the monitor will monitor one of the one of the monitor monitor the heartbeat, and you will see exactly the sine curve floating on the screen. So now, what is the sine curve? Okay, I'm going to remove this one. Okay, let's draw the curve. Everybody should know this curve, yes? Do you? If you don't know this curve, you, you haven't taken trigonometry, you should not be in this class. Okay, so suppose that I'm gonna only use a piece for zero to two pi, okay? Zero to two pi. Okay, that's a sine curve, isn't it? And I'm saying, I'm telling you the sine curve tells you domain and range. How do I know? You just have to know how to read it. You just have to know how to read it. Okay, you just have to know how to read it. In fact, I mentioned that in the module. Okay, if you read my module, those about sign, you will understand, okay? So I only show you the piece from zero to two pi, okay? I only show you the piece from zero to pi. How is this curve made? How is this curve made? Is everybody with me? Okay, how is this curve made? The curve is made in such a way that all the blue numbers are going to be lining up as the y value. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to put some uh, annotation. Okay, now you see this this angle. This angle is the standard position, right? This is the standard position. This is the standard position. When the terminal at the standard position, that angle can be zero, two pi, four pi, and so on and so forth. So we know sine is periodic. Suppose this angle is zero and this is zero. This place is zero radian, zero radian. Okay, what is the ratio? The ratio is the blue number zero. Do you, do you follow me? The ratio is the blue number zero. So this zero is right here, it's zero. Now let's look at pi over two, I'm sorry, pi over six, okay? What is a pi over six? Pi over six. Pi over six is this angle, is this angle, okay? This angle has an arc length on the unit circle, has an arc length on the unit circle. So this is the arc length. Do you, do you follow me? The arc length, do you follow me? That's the arc length. This arc length will be stretched straight and put it right here. Okay, arc length. I'm gonna use a slightly different color. Okay, the arc length is right here. 
this arc lens and this piece. Oh. Okay, so I'm gonna use a curl. Okay, so this, this curve of arc lens, you follow me? This piece of curve, the pink, the purple, the purple and this purple, these two are exactly the same lens. You follow me? So that's pi over six. This is, this how, how long is it? It's pi over six. You wanna know what is pi over six? You take 3.14 divided by six. That's how long it is, okay? And what is the blue ratio? The blue ratio is half. So the, this blue number is going to be here. I want it to be straight. So this purple, this purple lens is pi over six. Okay, this blue lens is what? Is the blue number here. Okay, the blue number here is equals to a half. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna use a blue number. Blue number, which is also the same height as this height. Okay, so I'm gonna erase this blue. You follow me? The purple arc lens is straightened up and it's the blue, uh, it's the purple. The blue height is which is the half is the half. You follow me? That's how the curve is made. I want you guys to walk to, to to make sure you understand it. it just give you a few minutes, uh, give you a few seconds to think about it. Do you follow me? As a result, <clears throat> okay. When we mark this point, when we mark this point, how do you mark this point? Can anybody mark this point? With all the clues I have given you. Can anybody mark this point? Cortland, can you mark that point for me? I'm confused. Isn't the purple the X value? No. The purple is the arc lens on unit circle corresponding to pi over six. Okay. This is the sine curve. This is the sine curve. On this curve, you can sign, you can find sine pi over six. How to find sine, how do you find sine pi over six? Sine pi over six. sine pi over six equals to one half, okay? Now, I'll show you one more time. If you want to find sine pi over six, everybody knows this value, right? So I'm using this value to illustrate. I'm using this value to illustrate. If you're looking for sine pi over six on the unit circle, where, where, how are you gonna look for it? You're gonna measure from the standard position. Okay, I'm not gonna use a blue color. I'm gonna use a color green. Okay, I'm gonna use the color green. Okay, make it lighter. This is the terminal of pi over six, and we choose a point. So x comma y on the unit circle, 
So when you look for this value on the unit circle for sine pi over six, and you look for that blue number, yes? By definition, that's y over r, r is one. You follow me? Sorry guys, I'm gonna redo this for you, okay? Is these two software just don't talk to each other, right? I'm using two software at the same time. So they don't talk to each other, but one doesn't give me the, one doesn't give me the uh, mathematical notation, but the other one give me the mathematical notation, but it has all these drawing tools, but doesn't have those, uh, those drawing tools, uh, convenient drawing tools, okay? You know, we have to pick and choose, okay? Maybe someone will invent a software to coordinate these things, okay? All right, sine pi over six. For sine pi over six, I'm gonna put it under, okay? On the unit circle, you know how to find it, right? So let me re, using definition. So definition, okay? I want you to reflect on definition. I know everybody know how to find this value, okay? Everybody remember this value, it's running your blood. I'm using this to, illustrate how to read each chart. Got it? Okay. Aaron says, I'm confused. Isn't the purple the X value? Root three over two. No, no way. Hold on. Aaron, just follow me, okay? By definition. By definition, you see, everybody draws this sine curve, but none of you understand what it is. So what's the point? What's the point, right? You didn't understand it. So please listen up, okay? So please, by definition, what is definition? What is the definition? Pi over six. How is pi over six measured? From the standard position, right? So you have pi over six. So that, let's go, go through the function process. Since we, since we do this, let's do it thoroughly, okay? So pi over six is the input, okay? And the output is sine pi over six, okay? Be patient with me, okay? You, you wanna learn something and you wanna discover simplicity, you have to do some due diligence, okay? The input is pi over six, <clears throat> addressing ARD, I'm addressing ARD. A is pi over six, okay? So you measure from the standard position pi over six. That, ter that terminal, that's a terminal. You pick any point on the terminal. So now I pick that point. I pick that point on the unit circle. Because pick any point would do. So now I pick the point on the unit circle. So this angle, this angle is pi over six, measured counterclockwise. You follow me? This angle is pi over six, yes? So that's the input for sine. Sine pi over six is defined as y divided by r, okay? So at this point, okay, this point, this point, the coordinate of that point, this is x. Oh, sorry, okay. This value is x, x is root three over two, and this other value is y, half is y, yes? So by definition, you take the y value, which is half divided by one, the radius is one, yes? You follow me? So sine pi over six, by definition,
by definition, you're going to take a half, which is the y divided by one. This was a one, y over r. Yeah, do you see that? And the y is half uh, for this point. And the r is one on the unit circle. Therefore, this equals to half. That's how you get the half. OK? Now, let's look at the making of this curve. The making of this curve. The making of this curve says, OK, on the unit circle, OK, I'm going to show you the same color. On the unit circle, there's an arc length, OK? Corresponds to the angle of pi over 6, OK, on the unit circle. So this is the purple. This is the purple. OK, it's a curve. And you take that piece of curve and straighten it up, make it straight. And where does that curve go? That curve is going to be here, straight. Okay, but this straight curve, this is straight in the curve, which is the same as this arc length. Arc length. Let me write down the word. Arc length. Arc length. Arc length. Do you guys understand arc length? Is that piece of circle, you keep the lens, you just make it straight. And so this purple lens is taken and measured here. Okay. And that is a pi over six. So this piece is pi over six. Okay, let me write down using purple, pi over six. Okay, so this purple piece, okay? What is the sine value of, for sine pi over six? Sine pi over six will give us a ratio of half. And where do we put the half? On the y. That's right, okay? The, the ratio is going to be measured right here. Oh, sorry. I want, a, I want a blue, come on. Let me, give me the blue. Okay. The blue right here. Ah, uh, I kind of messed up. Do you get it? Did you guys get it? Aaron? So at the end of pi over six, this is a half. You follow me? That's how the curve is made. Aaron, you got it? Not a root of three over two for pi over six, not for pi over three, yes. Do you guys understand this picture? This purple, which is a piece, okay? Opposite to the pi over six angle, there's an arc lens. The arc length is pi over six. And this pi over six is straightened up, make this straight line pi over six. And we take the blue number half and put it here. That's the making of sine curve. So how do you mark that point? How would you mark that point? Pi over six uh, comma y, I mean comma one over half. That's right, perfect answer. Okay, how do you mark this point? This point is pi over six comma one half. 
So that's how sine curve give you sine value. How sine curve give you sine value? Do you understand it? Is that what trigonometry taught, taught us? Now, Aaron mentioned root three over two. How about root three over two? Can you do the same thing to understand it? Make sure you understand it for root three over two. Do you wanna try that? I wanna give you two minutes to try that. Where do you find uh, pi over three? Pi over three, which is this number. The terminal is gonna be, the terminal is going to be over here. Right? The terminal is gonna be right here. Oh, by the way, okay, before we, we go further, this blue height and this blue height half, they're exactly the same, identical. If you, if you look for graph, okay, this blue height is, and this blue height, they are identical, but the arc length is taken. If you understand this one, you understand all the sine curve, cosine curve, tangent, and so on and so forth. They are all made the same way. They are all made the same way. Cosine, tangent, cotangent, same way. Cosine made we using the red number. Okay, so can you practice to see if you understand this whole thing? Okay, so for pi over three, shall we compare notes? What is a purple arc length? What is a purple arc length? Is it gonna be what? This is the angle, right? This is the angle, pi over three. The opposite to that angle is the purple arc length. It's longer, I'm sorry, my, my drawing is not uh, perfect, okay? This piece, pi over three. So, okay, you're gonna, you're gonna straighten that up, okay? Make it straight, pi over three. Somewhere here, okay? It doesn't have to be precise less than pi over two. And the blue number, the blue number root three over two is gonna be this guy. And that same height is going to go here. Do you guys follow me? Yes or no? It's that simple. Okay. Does everybody follow me? Does everybody follow me? Yeah. Any questions? Please put it there. Uh, Aaron, did you get it? Can yeah. you replace pi over six with radical three over two? Can you no. replace pi over six with radical root three? How do you replace it? Could you show me what do you mean? I don't understand what you're saying. Can you replace pi over six with radical three over two? 
How do you replace it? If you do it on a paper for your replacement, please take a picture and upload it. Now, now, does everybody understand? Never mind, I was getting confused. Well, the cosine value. Oh yeah, sure, but that's, then you're going to be talking about different curve, okay? That's what you meant. Yes, it's, it's you're 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 exactly you know doing the right thing. Okay, you started imagining about cosine, about tangent, about cotangent. Yes, they're all made the same way. They're all made the same way. Okay, angle ratio, you know, arc length ratio, arc length ratio, different ratios, all the ratio you did on the last quiz. Okay, you think that quiz was simple? That quiz was very simple, yes. That quiz was simple, I think. Do you, do you agree with me? But if you don't understand the simple, you will not be able to understand the more complicated. So now we're building from that simplicity and we're building this. Okay, how to read the sine curve, right? How to read the sine curve. So now I'm gonna clean up all of these. Okay, I'm gonna draw another picture. Okay, I'm gonna clean up all of these now. We understand, okay, the arc lens is straightened up and so on and so forth. Let's look at the blue number, right? At zero, the blue is just a dot, right? It's just a dot, it's a zero. At a pi over six, it's a half, it's a half. Okay. At pi over six, it's a half. Okay, so this is a half. This half is the same as this half, yes? Yes, that's for pi over six, you know, for angle pi over six. For pi over four, of course, you can get a little higher. This is for pi over four. And this is for pi over four. Approximately, okay. Forgive me. I, I, uh, I, I'm just approximating. Pi over three is this height. Pi over three is that height. Okay. Root three over two. Root three over two. For pi over two is this height. That's the highest of sine value. Right here. Okay. So you can imagine all of these blues, blue numbers, right? Zero, they will populate all over the places of the sine curve. And this is the highest number. This is the highest number. The highest number value is what? Huh? Can you, can you guys tell me? Sign of the highest value. Pi over two is equal to what? One, right? Yeah. And there are many, many angles because it's a periodic, right? Mm -hmm. So can you see this graph tells you the highest sine ratio is the positive one. So this curve tells you the domain and range as well. Yes, you learned trigonometry, you didn't learn that? Let's learn, let's relearn it. Okay, now how about these other blue curve under the x axis? They're giving me negatives. That's right. That's exactly right. Okay. So you're going to have a bunch of the blue over here. Where do they go? 
and the small the smallest is negative one right here. Where do they go? They go here. Negative. Negative one. And reaches two pi and start another cycle. Okay? You follow me? Mm -hmm. Did you get it? Did you get it? Aaron, Aaron, Andy, Cortland? Hmm? And he says, I'm getting confused. Where are you confused? Can you spell out your questions, please? Okay, so this picture tell us what? This picture tell us what? This picture, okay, if you know how to read the chart, how do, how do you, mark an arbitrary point on this picture. Suppose this point. This point, okay. Uh, arbitrary point on this picture. Okay, how do you mark it? It's an angle, okay, angle, comma, sign of the, the ratio. Arbitrary point on this curve, which is the arc lens from the unit circle is measured here, over here, the purple. I'm gonna see you use the, the, the purple. The purple, oh, sorry. The purple is arc lens, okay. The purple is the arc lens. The purple arc lens, you know, you know uh, from where, okay. Uh, so the angle is the purple arc lens, and the sine a. Uh, so I, I want to. I try to make the color coordination, okay. I try to make the color uh, coordination. So the angle, this arc lens, and the ratio. Oh. I, I have to change the mode, sorry. Okay, let me do this, okay? The, the angle, is, which is the arc lens, the arc lens, okay? And the ratio, the ratio is, is a blue, it's a sign, of that angle, oh, gosh, it's hard to make them talk to each other, huh? Now over here, the, the, the angle here, make it purple. Yes, by finding sine, we can say the arc lens is the angle measure. Yes, you got it. I'm sorry, the purple letters is for the arc length, right? This arc lens is the arc lens, whatever this angle is, is measured right here. Okay, this, this arc lens, okay? Mm -hmm. Straighten up. Is the angle arc lens is the angle? Okay, you get it. Arc lens is the angle. Thank you. It's on unit circle. Arc lens is the angle. Okay, and they are actually the same lens. Okay, they are actually the same lens. Okay, go back to read your trigonometry textbook. Go back to re read your trigonometry textbook. Okay, we can discuss that another time. But right now we're we're going to focus on this sine curve. Okay, so this is the angle. 
This angle is arc length. And arc length and angle at this time, at this point, they are the same. Okay. Now the ratio, the ratio from the blue heights. So now you can imagine for cosine would be what? The red number. You follow me? So when we talk about sign value, sign domain, what are the domain could sign be? The, what does this curve tell us about the sign, the domain of sign? Sign curve goes on in both directions forever okay. and ever. Yes? Yes, all real numbers. All real numbers, perfect. Perfect answer. How about the range? Range is one and neg uh, negative one. Between negative one and one, you can see the curve always, the height is bouncing between negative one and one, yes? Yes. That's the range. Do you follow me? Yep. So do you see simplicity? Do I see what? Do you see some simplicity? Simplicity. Once you understand what it is, you understand, right? Yeah. Okay. So the height of the curve tells you the range of sine value because that's the sine value. Okay. They're all the blues. Do you got? Do you get it? Yep. How about for cosine, for tangent, cotangent? Same thing. You understand one, you understand many. But they're all consistently built in the same way. Okay, so now I want you guys to work on cosine, just to make sure you understand it, okay? So I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes to work on cosine. And I'm not going to clean this up yet, but you're working on cosine. So you're going to take those red numbers to make your curve, however you want to make it, just to understand it, just to understand it. Okay. What I want to tell you, the journey you just went through is nothing new. A lot of our students didn't understand that. Okay, I do this to all of my pre-calculus classes in recent years, okay? As a student, when I was a student before, it, it took some time to understand it because not every teacher explained it to you that way or spent enough time on it. And if you don't spend enough time on it, we didn't understand and it just passed. Okay, so you have to really read about it. And it's very simple. That's how they set it up. They set it up in a way that they just take the sine angle and the ratio and make the sine curve and take the sine angle, take the angle and make the, and take the red number to make the cosine curve. That's, that's all I do. How about for tangent, right? So after you're done with the cosine, we're gonna look at tangent because of domain range issues, because of domain and range issues. Everybody's working on it. 
Mm -hmm. Good. You just give yourself some time to understand it, right? What is a cosine curve? And what's the, then your, the question we need to answer is what's the domain and what's the range? What's the domain, what's the range? I looked at the, the textbook of uh, tr trigonometry. They didn't do code, they, they only did sign. They did only did sign for this, I think. Okay, last time I saw it. Okay, so I'm checking, I'm checking the textbook. Oh, it starts at a different point. They mention the arc lens. I don't. I don't think they. Let's see if they should. Okay, they did sine lens, the sine. They did a cosine, but did, I, I don't think they mentioned the arc lens. Maybe they did. They did sine, they did a cosine. They kind of do the tangent. They kind of did the tangent. Just, yeah, you can find it in the textbook. You can find it in the textbook. Okay. But you, we have to do it ourselves. We have to do it ourselves to really understand it. Okay, so that picture tells you a thousand words, yes? Yes. At least it tells you the domain and range and so on and so forth, yeah? I'm, I'm not asking you to find a thousand words. I'm asking you to find a hundred. Would that be too much to ask for? Right? A lot of people say, oh, picture tell a thousand words, but can you tell me the thousand words? A lot of people can't. This to tell you, oh, hey, you go find a thousand words. But once you find that 1,000 words, you got it. Otherwise, you didn't. Can you pre-label the x-axis radians and then find it? Well, well, however you do, yeah, sure, why not? Absolutely, you, you probably should do that, right? This software I use doesn't doesn't label the pi, you know, doesn't label the pi well, you know, doesn't use the, the pi measure to, to label it. I know there's another software called Desmos. You guys hear about Desmos? I like Desmos. Desmos is really good. Yes, you can use Desmos. Okay, you can use Desmos. Using Desmos will also give you, uh, you know, the, my. My posting in module on the topics, I use that I use decimals to to get those pictures. Okay, I got those screenshots and and I put them together. Okay, so go ahead to to read about it after class. Okay, so I assume you guys got it for cosine, right? You got it for cosine. So let's let's see what's for cosine. Are you ready? I'm gonna clean this up. Just we're gonna compare notes. And we're going to reinforce the domain and range for cosine. Okay, so I'm going to take this picture. I'm going to take this. 
And we're going to go on to study cosine. Okay, I'm going to take that picture along with me as well. Okay, and I'm going to just have to change the curve. Instead of sine, I'm changing it to cosine. This is a cosine. And you all understand the arc lens now, do you? Yeah? Do you? Right? Yeah. And what will be the, this time will be the, this time will be the red number, right? Yeah. The first red number is what? Would be zero and one. That's right. Okay, so I'm gonna use the red. So what this, what does this point tells you? Zero. What does this point tells you? That one is. This point you can mark it as first of all is zero radians, cosine zero. What is a cosine zero? zero. Cosine of zero equals to one. Right, which is what lens? What lens is it? What is the red it corresponds to on the picture? The x-axis. That's right, right here. So this is red is lying down and we make it stand it up, stand up. You follow me? Mm-hmm. And you keep going. So how, well, what are all these red right here, right? Right here, all these red for those angles, right? We made them stand up, please stand up. Until pi over two, right? Mm -hmm. You keep going. So all of these are the red, the red numbers. Do you follow me? Yep. And all these red numbers, and now they're turning negative. You see this turning negative, right? Yep. Yep. You got it. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. How does that feel? Tell me. It feels very good. It feels great, isn't it? Yeah. Right? And those, all those red numbers, they're standing up. We lift them up. Raise them up. Right? Amazing. Amazing. So what's the domain and range? Doesn't this tell us domain and range? Doesn't this picture tell us domain and range? Yes. If you know these two pictures, you should know the domain and range right away. But if you don't, you didn't understand the picture. Mm. Can I say that? Mm. Now, so tell me what's the domain and range for cosine? Our row numbers, and then it's what they call it, ranges uh, negative one to ne uh, positive one. Perfect answer, perfect answer. Okay, so let's, let's express them algebraically. Ho hold on, okay, just one second. Um, just one second. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so now let's, how, let's see how we express it, right? How we express it. What are the forms you will need for calculus classes? Okay, we know that I, I, I want, once again, I want to illustrate that because I told you the theme this semester is function. Okay, so I'm going to be consistently using that theme. Okay, cosine, of any angle, okay, is gonna produce that ratio and that ratio, okay? So I'm gonna put, this is any, any angle, okay? The input for cosine is angle, 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 ingredients. And that ratio,
You can derive it the same hard way as I did earlier algebraically, which is a necessary skill. The absolute value is less than equals to one or, or what happens? It's between negative one and positive one. These two forms, along with the sign two forms, you will be tested left and right over and over again this semester because I want you to be fully prepared for your count on this matter. Is that clear? There's no secret on my exams. No secret. Everything I will I will test you, I will tell you in this in the in classes. Okay. And I won't be just telling testing you once. I will be testing you more than once, two times, three times. You got it? Now, how about for tangent? Domain and range for sine, cosine, everybody understand. How about for tangent? What is the domain for tangent? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me clean up. Tangent. Angles that goes in tangent, right? The tangent, the rule of tangent. What is the rule of tangent? Tell me, what's the rule of tangent? By definition, it's y over x, right? It's a ratio, right? All six functions are ratio. We're dealing with, we're dealing with ratio. The input or angle, output a ratio. So y over x. Y over x, wonderful. Y over x. But now we have issues. We learned that in trigonometry, uh, in uh, arithmetic, pre-algebra, zero cannot be the denominator, right? Y over X is easy, it's easy to do, isn't it? So you're gonna take this unit circle Take the unit circle, right? If you, if you, I, I know, you, I know you guys may not see this very clearly, but you have that unit circle on your cell phone, right? Yeah. See, so you're gonna do the y over x. How do you do the y over x on this on this unit circle? Y over x, y over x, y the blue over red, right? The blue divided by the red. Yes. Mm -hmm. When you do the blue, when you do this blue divide by red, what happens? Zero divided by one is zero. So tangent zero is zero. Tangent pi over six, what is it? It's root three over three, right? root three over three, yeah? And this tangent pi over four is one, tangent pi over three is root three and so on and so forth. But what happens when you do this for that, for that guy? One divided by zero, what happened to one divided by zero? Five. Five. Zero as a denominator, right? Five. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Can you divide by zero? No. Absolutely not. Therefore, for that input, for that input, there's no output, right? The output is undefined. So can that angle be? Input? 
can this angle, what is, what, what is this angle at this, you know, at this point? What is the terminal? What, what, what is that terminal? Measure it from the standard position and what is that angle? Pi over two, right? When the input for tangent is pi over two, we encounter, we encounter dividing by zero. Therefore, for that input, there's not a exactly one output. I'm, I'm quoting definition of function again. You follow me? Therefore, pi over two cannot be in the domain. So if pi over two cannot be in the domain, what are other angles that will, will have the same terminal? Pi over oh. two plus two pi, pi over two plus, pi over two. Another, plus another, you know, four pi and so on and so forth, right? Oh. So there will be many, many angles that the angle for the input angle for tangent that cannot be. Do you follow me? Mm -hmm. And then the question is, is there another one we have another situation that dividing by zero. Uh, three pi over two. That's right. Good eye. So this terminal cannot be as well. In both situations, what does it tell us? This tell us what? The angle cannot be cannot be pi over two. Yes, it cannot be. What else? It cannot be. It cannot be three pi over two. What else it cannot be? It cannot be positive pi over two. It cannot be negative pi, three pi over two either. So the list just go on, right? It can be all, it can be all the other angles. It just cannot be these values. But how do we express all of them algebraically? which your calculus teacher wants to see. Hmm? Yeah. Pi over two X um, plus one, right? You're asking me? What is X? What is X? What is X? If I don't know, if I don't know what X you meant, I certainly cannot judge your answer because I don't understand your answer. You have to make sure you, un you, you understand your answer, then you explain to other people, right? So the angles cannot be pi over two, cannot be three pi over two, because, but you understand, remember ARD, the angles are measured. How are the angles measured? The angle could have measured counterclockwise, clockwise, mm -hmm as many times, as many circles as you want. So there are many, many angles that this input cannot be for tangent. Yeah. You follow me? So how can you use, an, use one algebraic expression to express all of them? To the power. Vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote. I'm asking to express the angles. 
So you have to first observe the pattern of the values, the angles cannot be, right? Because right now we're discussing domains, okay, everybody? How do you figure them? How do you figure this out? Plus minus, plus minus, right? Oh, plus or minus, uh, it would be. This is a pi two. over two, right? Pi this is three two. times pi over two, isn't it? Uh -huh. This is three times pi over two, and the next one will be five pi, five times pi over two, right? Mm -hmm. You see a pattern. Yep. If it adds, it's a con two, uh, two pi over two. It cannot be. Okay, verbalize it, verbalize it, okay? We, not everybody is a mathematical genius, including myself. I, I'm certainly, I'm very, very slow in mathematics, but I take my time. I take my time, I do a little bit of time. I verbalize it, okay? Whatever is your mother tongue, you may like to verbalize it in your mother tongue, if that helps, okay? So when you observe this pattern, what do you see? You, you realize the input cannot be odd number multiples of pi over two. Do you agree with that? I agree with that. You, you, need, you need this skill in calculus two. Well, also you need it in calculus one, but in calculus two, you need it any more, even more. Chapter 11, okay, you learn series, sequence and stuff like that, okay? So A cannot be odd number multiples of pi over two. How do you express odd number? How do you express odd number? So now we're gonna translate, A cannot be Okay, so if you put it here, I'm gonna put odd number, okay? Odd number, multiples of pi over two. So next, we need to express odd number. We learned this in elementary algebra. We learned this in elementary algebra. So now I'm gonna give you the answer, okay? The answer is 2K plus one. K is any integer. That's how you express, that's how you express odd number multiples of pi over two. Okay, odd number, okay. Why is this odd number? Because if you plug in any integer, you're gonna get an odd number. So this form will allow us to run over all the possible odd number multiples of pi over two. So they will be ruled out. Okay, so let's rewrite this process. Okay. Any angle, right? Domain range. So now the angle cannot be any angle has to be modified, okay? Any angle such that it cannot be this, okay? So it cannot be any angle. Any angle has to be questioned over here. It cannot be any angle. It has to, sub it's a subject to this restriction. Now it's subject to this restriction. So any angle satisfy this restriction which is not odd number of uh, odd number multiples of pi over two can be the input. And the output now is for tangent. It's for tangent, okay, for tangent. Okay, sorry, I, I, sorry, I copied the wrong line. Okay, tangent. So now the question is, now we got the domain. What is the range? What is the range? Someone mentioned the vertical asymptotes. Okay, you probably refer to 
the tangent curve. What does that mean? Okay, yes, you will be using tangent curve in calculus classes. I don't understand what it means, right? So what does it mean? Hmm? It won't touch the uh, vertical asymptote, the line for the curve. Okay, why it doesn't? Because, because A cannot be an odd number multiple of uh, pi over two. That's right, okay. So, so if you look at tangent, right? It cannot be any angle anymore. It just, let me, let me just put here. I, I'm sorry, I was pointing to the wrong place. I hope I didn't confuse you guys. Okay, that was for cosine. So I'm gonna move this up, okay? So this is a tangent function, okay? That's the rule. And we, you guys told me that it's y over x, y over x. What is y over x? On the unit circle, you take the blue number divided by the red number, right? We, we, we all get that. So let's look at the tangent curve. Let's look at the tangent curve. Okay, because now next we're gonna figure out what is the range of a tangent? What is the range of a tangent? Okay, what is the range of a tangent? We got the domain, all right, okay? The domain can be figured figure out from other ways too, okay? But right now we're still working on the unit circle. You can see from one picture, how many words we can dig out. We're mm -hmm. far away from 1000. We're still working on this unit circle, right? Yeah, we're finished. Did I give you any other tools? No. From this piece of unit circle, you can derive a lot of information. Yeah, we're finished. Okay. Now, since you guys know this, this, the tangent curve, so I'm gonna just plot it, okay? You guys can use decimals if you want. Okay, you, can, you guys can use decimals if you want because decimal does give you a better picture, but, it, but I have some technical difficulties over here. Okay, so I'm going to just make, make it lay out next to each other. How does that look? Does it look decent to you? Does it look decent to you? This is a tangent curve, right? Mm -hmm. Does it look decent to you? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make some adjustment on the view. Uh, maybe negative one point. Okay. Some of you, some of you mentioned the vertical asymptote. What does it mean? Huh? Can you draw those vertical asymptotes? Can you tell me what that means? Can you tell me what that means? We're really diving deeper for understanding, right? You will need this. You will definitely need this. Okay, I'm gonna just talk about one piece. Okay, I'm gonna talk about one piece. All right, now you look at this ratio, right? Ratio, so what does this point mean? Suppose I, I point to a point right here, this point. Okay, with all we have done, we, we, we're gonna, okay, this point. 
the vertical line, I mean, the height is one. The height is one, okay? So I'm not gonna use blue, I'm not gonna use red because blue and red, blue is for sine, red is for cosine, right? So what color should I be using? I'm going to use green. Okay, the green, this height is one. Okay, I'm just telling you it's one. But do you know the meaning? Can you mark this point? I'm, I'm see, I wanna see if you understand what I'm saying. You understand this? Can you describe to me what does this point heart means? What is a coordinate? Right, you know there's a, there's a tangent where value equals to one, right? Oh, time is up. Oh, time is up. The point where the curve cannot be. Yes, very good. Very good, Cortland. Okay, so we, we need to wrap up. So we'll continue this tomorrow, okay? So mm -hmm. I want you to think about this question. Okay, the value, if you understand sine, cosine today, tangent A comma one. Very good, Cortland. You are so close. But what is that? Well, no, tangent A is wrong, okay? It should be A comma tangent A. No, you're, you're wrong, okay? So it should be A tangent A. Okay, I was telling you I'm not gonna use red, but I hope this doesn't confuse you. I'm gonna use green, okay? A, this angle A, I'm sorry, Cortland, you, thank you for your answer, but this A should be what angle? Is A is the angle, it's the arc lens. I over four. That's right. That's right, excellent. So it should be pi over four comma tangent pi over four equals to one. This point, this point which is, which is a heart is Pi over four, what is a pi over four? Pi over four is this lens. Is the purple. Okay, it's still the same purple arc lens. Purple arc lens, do you guys follow me? Right here, the purple arc lens. I'm sorry, even though my drawing is not that, it doesn't look the same, they are the same. Okay, this is a matter of scale. So this purple is the same as this purple. And this one is the ratio of the blue and the red. One over root two divided by one over root two. So we'll continue this tomorrow. So we're gonna figure out the range of a tangent. And you, I, I, want to, I want to get you guys to understand the implication. This will prepare you for Cal. Okay, you follow me? All right, you continue the study. You should expect a quiz today on topics from yesterday and the homework from yesterday. Okay, I give you some homework yesterday. Did you guys notice? Practice your basic skills and what we covered today. Okay, I'll see you guys in office hour, okay? If you need to see me. Okay, I will be transitioning to office hour. I will see you guys tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Pascal, might be coming back from So they're trying to